Welcome to the Adhocracy Vodcast. My name is Jack and I'm here with my good friend Luke and today we are talking about 5G. That's right, people in your tinfoil hats, this is the stuff that apparently causes COVID-19 and coincidingly also seems to ramp up with the Omicron variant. Is it coincidence or is it just more hearsay? Uh, today, Luke is going to be answering some questions. I have quite a few around this topic and we'll see <laughs> how quickly we can answer the questions about 5g lightning round podcast huh it podcast is. yep lightning round podcast okay <laughs> what frequency is 5g at 3.8 ish to 3.98 okay is, 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 is where they're wanting to expand to okay sounds good and then uh there's also a recent concern announced by the faa and in fact the faa is the reason why this whole thing is not yet live and why we don't all have faster netflix and amazon prime on our phones correct Yes. Okay. Uh, what's the concern? Why is the FAA involved with t cell phones? So the FAA... I mean, come on. Like, seriously, do I have to turn off my cell phone every time I board this plane before it takes off just to watch the presentation that we've all seen 3,000 times? There's some pretty good presentations by some of those flight... flight there there uh, are. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was a good one for The Hobbit. Anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> so the concern here from the, from the FAA is that radio altimeters which is basically almost a form of sonar that the aircraft uses like is to, it actually pinging the ground and yes okay All it's right. actually pinging the ground and measuring the time it takes to get the signal back okay. is using the frequencies of 4.2 to 4.6 uh, okay. gigahertz which th there is a band in there between the the 3.98 the top of the 5g and the 4.2 the bottom of the radio altimeters mm -hmm. And that is in a very intentional uh, safety precaution to make sure that there's no interference between the two. Okay. But the FAA is concerned because it is close. Okay. So we have a frequency that may be close. Now, does this affect new altimeters, old altimeters? I mean, there have been some airplanes that are still flying around from the 1970s, some older Cessnas, and I mean, probably even some that are older than that. But So originally, altimeters did just use pressure. Okay. They did, you, would, you would set your pressure at takeoff. You knew what elevation of the airport, so you could essentially use that. And you would just hope that a high or low pressure system didn't roll in <laughs> and, th and throw you off, especially yes. while you're uh, like uh, flying through the mountains in Alaska. Right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. While there are the older altimeters, the newer altimeters do use this radio frequency. Okay. And so some of them don't have as good of shielding or the I should say that the concern is that they don't have as good a shielding against some of these outside or close frequencies. So uh -huh. you're more likely to get um, interference from them. And so that's the concern. It, it's more of a concern. There okay. isn't really. Here, here's a question. These altimeters, the old school ones within this range, are they analog or digital? Because it would seem like digital would solve this. You have the, you can run check sums even on your pings apparently from going to the ground mm -hmm. is what I would figure. Um, but I'm guessing this is not about new and current modern altimeters. This is probably about legacy compatibility and making sure we don't screw things up for people who have already paid for their airplane components. Correct? Is that kind of the gist of this? Yeah. So the FAA is supposed to, keep all of that in check and so that's why they put out you know regulations and air you know uh, they put out regulations to be able to uh, make sure that everyone is in compliance and everyone's uh, playing off the same sheet of music so if the altimeters need to change the FAA would be the one to dictate that so while there might be planes you know like the the B17 flying fortress that flies around my guess is they put a radio altimeter into that airplane and to upgrade upgrade the avionics so that it's in compliance right. and has okay. a better altimeter because, for one, you don't want to crash a historic plane, but also you just don't want to crash. Sure. Okay. And then uh, is this only a United States of America thing or is this a global thing? Like FAA obviously doesn't have authority everywhere in the world. So the FAA has authority for flights that come into the U.S. So okay. uh, one of the cases that was brought up by the cell companies here is that over in France – they implemented this 5G technology with some space around the airports, but um, it wasn't as significant as what we're, what the FAA is requiring in America. And so the, the concern there or the, the beef from the cell companies is that there's two different standards there being held by the same organization okay. based on the location. I mean, I believe one of the letters that the cell companies said to the FAA is physics don't change, you know, <laughs> <laughs> even though your regulatory body might physics don't. I guess. Yes, so, exactly. Right, sounds good. Um, okay. So what, what's next? Like, is this coming through? I mean, where are the cell phone companies at? Where's this battle at? Where, wh wh so a year ago, the cell companies, 
um, we're, we're going to, we're wanting to implement this and let the FAA know. And the FAA said, give us a year to think about this. Cause we're not sure what's okay. going to happen. Well, that year was coming up and the FAA said, uh, we need another month. And the cell companies said, okay. Well, a few days ago, the FAA said, Hey, we'd like two more weeks. And the cell company said, no. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Now, uh, that seems like this is all FCC jurisdiction anyways. Is this going to be going like Supreme Court status type stuff? Or is this more just back and forth, belly aching? And So the FCC is the one who sold this band to the airline companies. And then the FAA, likely the concern here is the F- FCC got paid to let them use this band, but the FAA will have to pay if anything goes wrong. Okay, so FCC sells the frequency to the cell phone companies? Yes. And then FAA basically has to just give it a rubber stamp saying, yeah, we don't think it'll cause problems, and that's it. Well, um, it, it shouldn't cause any problems, and that and that's kind of the thing. The, right. the FAA is being hyper-cautious on this, as with anything they are, as with anything in... Um, the airline industry, they are very cautious about things to make sure that it's a very safe, that air, that air traffic is very safe. Yeah. I like to successfully get from A to B. So I appreciate yes. the regulatory body. I think it's necessary. Um, but I also have personal interest in making sure my streaming, uh, works as effectively as possible. Now, the one thing that kind of bums me out in this whole thing is that we're still talking about buffers around the airports. And to me, airports are always the worst sell service locations you have too many people stealing you know taking too much bandwidth and blocking the downloads and these speeds that the cell companies are trying to use would (laughs) exactly um would exactly do that it would increase but basically when you go up in frequency it gets you faster speeds it gets it available to more people it's it's an all-around win Mm -hmm. when you go for this don't you also have to transmit at higher powers to do the same distance because it's like my 5g wi-fi in the house uh, has far less distance that it can go through. In fact, just with a few rooms away, five gigahertz is like basically gone, but my 2.4 can, you know, go all the way up to the top of the hill type of thing. I actually know what you're talking about as far as Wi-Fi, but as far as the airline industry, I'm not sure. Right. Um, I, I know that around the airports, they are cu- cutting this back so that there won't be as many of these 5G radio waves floating through the air. Okay. But, um, so, so maybe they dissipate. I mean, that might be why they're... The okay. determine the range that they are. Gotcha. Okay. Sounds good. And then is there anything else that we like need to cover on this? We, or this, this almost sounds like a stay tuned for more updates on the 5g telephone industry versus, I mean, right FAA. now, yeah. I mean, right, right now the cell companies are basically saying we're going to implement, yep. we're going to keep safe zones around the airports, but we have absolutely zero evidence of this causing any problems. This has been implemented in over 40 countries and and one of them being France where they're having zero issues with this. We have done everything we were supposed to do and the the FAA keeps moving the goalposts on us. So we're just going to go ahead and implement with these safety zones around the airport. So as far as where it's at right now, yeah, this is this is almost a stay tuned. But I have a feeling it's probably going to go nowhere because I think the FAA is being overly cautious on this. Okay, All right. Fair enough. So we have an overly cautious FAA. And as as programmers say, if it compiles, ship it. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So there we go. All right. Thank you so much for watching the Adhocracy Vodcast. Um, Go ahead and click that like button, the subscribe button. Uh, Don't forget that bell notification. They got that on YouTube. Um, I think there's also ways on Spotify to like things. You can add that to your list. You can queue up every one of our things. Do that every single day. Get lots of plays. That counts. Uh, Tell your friends and your grandma about it. Um, And uh, yeah, that's it, right? That's it. Awesome. Cool. Thanks. Bye.